Hello, my Neptune stars. I'm Sialsa Neptune, Neptune Moon, Natasha, and I'm sorry it's been a long time, but you know, I had a lot of stuff to do and some vacation, so I want to do my own things. But hey, I'm back. Uh, so we're gonna do some more Seduce Me, the whatever the game this is. Last time we left off here. I honestly can't remember. That's all I re remember. We just left off here. I should just go with that. And I missed, I accidentally clicked on it, so you didn't hear the voice at intercom. But we have been, it says, we had to go to the main office. Oh yeah. my. Right, let's get on to this. Looks like our plans have been cut short. The men in white coats have finally come to get you. <laughs> Suzu, don't joke around. What if it's serious? Yeah, what if it is serious? Ah, fine. If something happens, just call us. Okay. Funny enough, something did happen. I need to get a drink of water. By the way, if my voice sounds really different, it's because I, I, I now have a retainer, so... Yeah, it's going to sound really different. And it was certainly no laughing matter. Cold. It was really cold. The rain became heavier that afternoon, accompanied by rolling thunder. Now and then, the skies had turned dark, even... Though I couldn't see any of it under a black umbrella. Speaking of dark, I'm sorry. I forgot my light on. Now you can see me. Hi. Not, not that I was looking up. In fact, looking up was the exact opposite of what I wanted to do. Ooh, somebody. I stared at the grass beneath my feet, unable to look up at the people weeping around me. All I could do was... All I could see was a, the damp grass underneath my feet. Only the monotone, uh, that word, I don't know the words, that floated through my ears reminded me that I was at a funeral. It was only when the speeches ended and I was finally able to raise my head. Harold and the died. A small gathering of people, mostly made up of relatives I didn't even know were related to me, were huddled around a simple small grave. For a while, I had I had heard was a, the sound of raindrops on umbrellas. If it weren't raining, everything would probably be I'd probably be in heavily silent silence. Was it me, or does every stereotypical funeral? have to have rain. I looked beside me where my father was standing and holding up a large black umbrella for a small family of three. His face was emotionless, a strange sight next to my weeping mother. I wonder what was going through his mind. After all, etched into smooth gray tombstone before was his father's name. My grandfather, the one who raised me like his own grand like his own daughter, has passed away way that day. The ceremony was small. Only close family were allowed to come. Slowly, though, people began to leave, leaving my father, mother, and me behind at the grave. <sighs> a lot of reading. Am I in school again? <clears throat> a man dressed in a clean black suit under the uniform black umbrella of the funeral attendees walked towards us, introducing himself as grandfather's lawyer. He pulled out a few documents from his suitcase and began to read up aloud its contents. And now, I shall read Harold Anderson's last will and testament. Oh. Only my parents and I were allowed to be present for my grandfather's will. It was under a strict request of his lawyer, and there was a reason why. And to my dearest granddaughter, I give my estate. All the furniture and decor that resides within the house shall also be given to my granddaughter. Yeah, I got I got a new house. What? I couldn't believe my ears. I ha had earned the family's the family estate at eighteen. <clears throat> that was impossible, and yet it was written by my own grandfather's hand. He passed the family estate to her. Why am I not surprised? There's something wrong, Dad? Dear. 
No. Oh, it is I'm presumed sorry. that the vice chairman will succeed the position. I actually misclicked. I don't know what he said. <laughs> Even to the bitter end, he wouldn't give in. What a stubborn old man. Very respectful, aren't you? Shaking his head, my father turned to face my mother with serious expression on his face. About the estate. Should we send her there to get used to the building? It'll be a good place for her to live after high school. And my computer is fascinating. Are you sure we should? Why not? This would be a good experience for her. Honey, what do you think? I think that I should take the house. And leave you guys. I wasn't sure what to say. What? Why did my grandfather think that I was the appropriate heir to the mansion? <clears throat> Was I all, was I even ready to leave on my Well, own? that seems to be it. We'll be taking our leave now. I'm sure the little heiress needs some time to adjust. Uh, I think that my father is... <laughs> my father is a bit of a... Moving on. David! What? Well, my father's name is David, huh? That's why. Even though she raised her voice, my dad wordlessly began walking back to the car, disinterested. Don't mind him, honey. I think that your grandfather's passing really affected him. Why don't we get back home for now? Yes, Mom. You can go You can go on ahead to the car, Mom. I think I need some time alone, Grandpa. Oh, of course. Take all the time you need. She gave me a quick hug and hurried after my dad. I looked around the field grounds, which was completely empty, saving this for the sulking look looking grave that was laid in front of me. I'm sure that if Grandpa were in charge of arranging all this, it would have been much different. It was blatantly obvious that my dad was in charge of the whole event. Who else would bury their own family the same day they pass away? Everyone knew my grandfather's love for toys, and yet the grave was as a mere stone slab on the ground, void of any children's toys. My dad didn't even bother putting flowers. That sucks. His disdain for my grandfather was almost pitiful. Sorry, Grandpa. I tried to force out some words, but the only thing that came out was a choke sob. You told me to stay strong, but right now, I'm the farthest from it. Like that one time, a long time ago. Oh great, flashbacks. Grandpa! Oh, it's so good to see you again, sweetie. <laughs> oh my god, I love his voice! I swept, I swept into a giant bear hug, and we both laughed and as he swung me around like an airplane. It was one of my favorite things about seeing my grandfather, the way he greeted me. Unlike my father, my grandfather was a loving and playful was loving and playful even as I grew older. Sorry that Daddy couldn't come here today. He said he wasn't feeling too good again. It it had always been like that. Dad missed every visit to Grandpa's house, saying that he was he was busy with work or wasn't feeling well. Is that so? Well, that's okay. Daddy can come around next time, and you're here, right? Mm, yeah. So, what are we going to do today, Grandpa? Excuse <laughs> me. Mommy said that there's a new dessert cafe open in town. Maybe we could go. Oh, I would love to. But I've been so busy with the company these days. We're actually working on a little something. Would you like to see? Yes! Ooh, is it a toy? It is. I was designing a new line of them. But I feel like something's missing. You don't think you could help me out, could you? Of course! He placed the toy in, in my hand with... In my hands with a smile. I inspected it carefully. It was beautifully crafted, and honestly, a lot of work was put into it. There was one thing, though. So, what do you think? Mmm, I think the heart on his chest should light up 
when you hug it. It'll, it'll be like it's alive. And it can be like a little nightlight before you sleep. Stroke his chin, considering my input while nodding his head. After a few moments of silence, silent deliberation, he turned to me with a chuckle. That's a great idea. I'll get to changing it right away. You're always like my little lucky charm, dear. You always know what to add to make the perfect toy. Thanks, Grandpa. <laughs> well, I hope I, I can be like you one day, Grandpa. You want to make toys as well? Mm, well, making people happy is the, be is the best feeling in the world. I don't know if I can make toys when I grow up, though. That's actually true. Uh, making people happy is the best feeling. Don't worry too much about it. You have plenty of time to decide. Besides, you should do what makes you happy as well. Making people happy? That makes sense. Daddy doesn't think of, of it in the same way, though. Your father. I'm sure he just wants the best for you. I'm not sure about that. Sweetie, look at me. Yes? He bent down to look at me eye level, with a serious look on his face. As much as your father may say something that doesn't make sense now, you must remember that he's always thinking about you. He loves you. There's no doubt about that. And you need to love him just as equally. Aww. I don't hate Daddy. I really love him. I don't know why he's like this, though. Your father and I have had some difficulties with each other in the past. But it's nothing that you should be concerned about. I heard tidbits of of this from my mother and various other people. The the only people who had stayed quiet were my father and my grandfather. Both of them refrained from saying a word on the subject matter, but it was clear that whatever happened set them set up a wall between them. It's hard though, trying to pretend as if nothing were wrong. However, no matter what, you have to stay strong. You're a big girl already, and, well, there'll come a day when it seems like it's you against the world. But always remember that your family and friends will be here with you. Daddy, Mommy, your friends at school, me, we'll stand together to get through it. How can, ah, how can you be so sure of that? Because we'll be right here and here. He pointed his fingers, his pointed his finger to my head first, then pointed to my chest. So stay strong. Promise? For a moment he looked almost sad, pleading. But as quickly as it as it had come the expression disappeared from his face. And he was all smiles once again. Promise. Upon hearing that, Grandpa let out a great burst of laughter and stood up. Alright then, enough of that. How about I whip up some special homemade dessert? I know I can't accompany you at that new cafe, but we sure can talk and eat while I cook and do some paperwork. Homemade dessert? I'll race you to the kitchen! Hey, slow down there. I'm not what I used to be. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. You'll be, you'll, you will be the very home I... You will me the very home I love to see you in. Why? Why would you think I would be ready to take it? Especially after this. A surge of anger bubbled within me, but I, I quickly swallowed it. There was no use in getting mad, especially when the person in question is no longer there. I'm sorry, it's hard to stay home when you've left me with so many questions. There's knocking at my door. I don't want it. Especially about what happened between you and Dad. <laughs> what am I doing? Talking to a grave. My vision blurred, and I suddenly realized that I was crying. My face heated up as tears rolled down my cheeks. I'll bring you some flowers later. I, I miss you, Grandpa. I'll try my best to fulfill my promise I gave you. Even if the world might be turned against me. 
left the grave wiping tears hastily, so my parents went to see. Well, it's time to head back home. I'll cook up your favorite lasagna when we get home, okay? Ooh. Thanks, Mom. However, my dad didn't speak the entire drive home. I wanted to talk to him, but after his moment at the funeral, I wasn't sure if it was a good idea. It's about time we took off those dreary black clothes. Hey, we're home. Gathering my courage, I decided then that it was time to talk. Dad, could I ask you something? Go ahead. Why do you want me to move into the estate so soon? I thought I made that rather clear. The college near your grandfather's house is well known for its business program. You are planning to major in business, yes? Maybe. Right after you graduate from high school, you'll just live there and can easily commute to and from school. It's a perfect fit for you. I wish I was real. But it's so sudden. You just decided so quickly right, right after the funeral. Uh, don't be so sensitive. If you're like that in the real world, you'll be crushed. Great talk, Coach. I'm just saying that maybe we could talk a bit about my future. And you'll find my father rubbed his temple inside quietly. After you graduate from college, you'll work at Anderson Family Toys. I have connections since I am part of the board of directors, so you will be guaranteed a spot. That is what we talked about before, yes? But what if... Stop mumbling! I wasn't mumbling. But what if I don't want to work there? Don't be silly. It's the family company. Our company. I'm not just going to hand it over to some incompetent vice chairman. Great talk. He came closer to me, his face softened. Look, this is all for the best, okay? You may not know it right now, but you will appreciate it later. For some reason, when I heard him say that, Something snapped in me. I wasn't exactly sure what it was, but it made me feel so angry. Do you even care that Grandfather passed away? Oh, damn. Of course I do. Well, everything seems fine and dandy to you. Things couldn't be better. Excuse me? I don't like your tone, young lady. Well, I don't like yours. It's, it's, not, it's like nothing even happened at all. Like you just ignored the fact that he's no longer here. Do not raise your voice at me. I am not raising my voice at you. What what did he ever do to you to deserve this? Can I not read? My father, his face hardened, crossed his arms and rubbed it in angry laughter. Ha! <laughs> you sure place him upon a pedestal. Like he's some kind of venerated god or something. It makes me sick. Is that it? Are you happy seeing Grandfather dead? What, while everyone was grieving, were you holding yourself back from laughing in everyone's faces? Did you feel just a, a bit happier seeing him lie in the, in the graveyard? Oh shit. A flash of rage crossed his face and he wiped, he whipped the back of his hand across my cheek. You don't know anything! Running your mouth like somehow you know everything that went on when you're just a little girl that doesn't know how to keep her mouth shut! Really? No, my cheek hurts now. <laughs> you did not know my father! You did not know what he was capable of! Is everything alright? What happened? Nothing. I'm not hungry. I think I'll just go upstairs. Honey, wait! I quickly turned and ran up the stairs to my room, slamming the door behind me. My breath came in short, in short pants, and for a while I just leaned against the door to my bedroom, eventually sliding down to sit against it. How did things become like this? My cheeks still, my cheek still throbbed, and I tentatively stood up and looked in the mirror to see how it looks. Hopefully, he doesn't bruise. <laughs> what am I saying? Tears formed in the corner of my eyes, but I blinked them back rapidly. I couldn't cry for the second time today. 
I had to be stronger than that. Are you all right? Your father told me nothing happened, but you know your father. I'm fine. I just lost my appetite. That's why I never lose my appetite. The lasagna's done, though. And I don't want you skipping any meals. Are you sure? Yeah, don't worry about me, Mom. I'll come downstairs later to eat. You're not telling me the whole story. I... I, I just don't want to eat right now. Please, dear. Tell me what's going on. I wish you would tell me why you're being like this. Ask Dad. Once I tell her, a part of me was screaming to her what Dad had done. At the same time, I knew she couldn't fix anything. Besides, I was moving it regardless. I remained silent, letting the event remain in the past. Well, I'll leave your food on the table if you want to eat it later. Finally, my... <clears throat> Finally, my mom left me alone. It was it was strange to think that she was only a few inches away from me, only separated by a single wooden door. I really didn't <clears throat> I really didn't know what had what to do. I needed to do something, anything, to get my mind off what just happened. Anything would be better than thinking any more about the pain still radiating from my cheek. I was going to, to move into my grandfather's house tomorrow. I should probably pack my stuff so I'll be prepared for tomorrow. Yeah, that was a good idea. I should start packing. Who am I talking to? I opened, I opened the closet, rummaging around for a while before I found two large bags, pulling them out onto the floor of my room. I then began to empty my drawers in cabinet so I so that I could bring all my things with me. I didn't have much to bring other than just clothes and some toiletries. It was kind of bizarre that I didn't have any, many personal belongings. It was it wasn't just my luggage was it wasn't like my luggage was completely devoid of them. But I certainly didn't have many things in my room that I would miss if I suddenly left the house. I shook my head and read myself for those thoughts. If it were going to be my new home, it would, it would have to feel like it. One way or another, I was going to make it home. You Just as I was packing my things, my cell phone began ringing and vibrating in my pocket. I hope I don't get copyright for that. That was a good song. Um, comment if you know know the title of that. I slid my phone out of my pocket and answered it while slowly easing myself onto the bed. Who could possibly be calling me? Hey Anderson, you there? Ah, Susan. Is everything all right? We were worried about you, so we decided to call. Hello? I'm really glad you guys called. My voice managed to come out, though it was only a whisper. What happened? Are you okay? <clears throat> well... So I began to tell them ha about the funeral that afternoon. Smart silence followed when I was done recounting what happened. And to my relief, Naomi finally spoke up. I can't begin to imagine how you must be feeling right now. I'm so sorry. Do you want us to come over right now? No, it's okay. My dad isn't in a good mood, so we can... So, could we just keep talking on, on the phone like this? No one cares about you antivirus stuff. Of course! We'd stay on the phone until the crack of dawn. Right, Suzu? Plus, I'm sorry about that. Why did I just pop up? Yep, yeah. yeah. We're always here if you need us. After all, we wouldn't be the awesome triple threat trio without you, right? <laughs> yeah. Triple threat trio? That sounds like the name of a gang. Because we are one. Yeah. I mean, we're all taking on the world together. We've got to sound somewhat scary, or else no one's going to take us seriously. What's with you in naming things? You've got to step up your game, Naomi. Falling behind to the cool kids like Anderson and me. 
Hey, I'm a cool kid. If anything, I'd say you have to step up your game. <laughs> we chatted cheerfully about all sorts of things. Very soon, I had forgotten about the events of that day and was engaged in the conversation about Naomi's favorite TV show, some program, some program called Her Luck. Is that a real thing? Hopefully it's not. We all agreed that the actor playing the titular character certainly had a very distinctive look about him. Uh, with, with that long overcoat and, and scarf wrapped around his neck. He had many disagreements about they had many disagreements about who we thought was the coolest character. <laughs> yeah, he he has really high cheekbones and his eyes are pretty, though I do have to per say I prefer Jetson. Oh, it's a spin off of Sherlock. Jetson, Watson, Sherlock, Sherlock. Yep. And as a bonus, his character is is just so sassy. I looked at the clock hanging on the wall and realized how late it was. Whoa, it's already 1 a.m.? Sorry for keeping you guys so up so late. I think I'm going to hit the hay for tonight. I'll see you guys at school tomorrow. I should probably shower and go to bed. I can't believe I stay up this late just to talk to my friends. Who am I talking to?! But it was really nice. Well, to the bathroom I go. Seriously, who am I talking to? <clears throat> I think my character is crazy. Like me in real life. Uh, I, I took a relaxing shower. Nothing, be nothing beats hot water and the feeling of being clean. After drying myself, I promptly dressed in my pajamas and crawled into bed. Ah, a nice shower after a long day. I'm so glad to finally be in bed. It had it had been a really long day. I knew that I was wish that I was wishing for something to change back in class. <laughs> oh, excuse me. But so, I certainly wasn't expecting anything of the thing, a, any of the things to happen today. And I have to go back to school tomorrow. Uh, who was I talking to? I curled, I curled up on my side and tightly wrapped, uh, wrapped the blanket around me. I really w wasn't in the mood to returning, to be returning to school. My dad probably would make me go just for the sake of it. It's time to go to sleep. I'm crazy. <laughs> I reached out to, to the lamp on my nightstand and turned off the lights. However, my mind was so lost in, in the passing of my grandfather. And the thought of it in, of inheriting something so big that that it haunted my mind the entire night until next morning. Yeah. I shook I shook my head to try to clear the emptiness, the, the sleepiness, out of my of me to no avail. I really didn't get any sleep last night. It's all Sorry, time to wake up. Wait, school. Am I late? <clears throat> as soon as I realized I had to go to school, I slid out of bed and looked at the vanity mirror. For a leaf. Luckily, there was barely a bruise on my cheek. You you had to squint to, to actually see it. I doubt anyone would actually notice it unless they leaned in really close. Breaking aside, I got dressed, took my backpack, and caught the bus to go to school. It wasn't even hours before everyone heard of the news. I'll put my phone. I was I was approaching school and given condolences of my for my loss. However, that wasn't what shocked my friends. Wait, so you have the whole Anderson house to yourself? Lucky as hell, man! <laughs> <clears throat> Quit being so sensitive, Naomi. Quit being so vulgar, Suzu. Uh, um, should I, who should I agree with? Mm. I mean, you were in school. You shouldn't really be 
have vulgar language. Then again, we're in high school. You're expected to hear that. Hmm. Um. Naomi's right, Suzu. Zuzu's right, Naomi. Uh, sure. Oh, man, come on! Okay. See? She knows about proper public taste. I know how to be a lady. Sheesh. <laughs> <clears throat> Guys, I'm going up. I'm going there after school today, because my parents want me to get you still being there. Seriously? It hasn't even been a day since you came back to school. I know, but my parents want me to try living there as soon as possible. Still, that's really fast. Are you going to be okay? Of course. <laughs> but even but even in the comfort of my best friends, life se seemed to keep testing me. Oh shit. Oof. Hey! Don't go around shoving people like that! Whoops! Did I strike a nerve, Capini? Oh, there I rolls. She let out a small laugh as she twirled her hair around her finger. What? Was that? Was that one of the, the last people I wanted to see today? It's not me you should be apologizing to. Oh, Anderson. Hey, how's it going? I'm alright. Uh, haven't you already heard Lizette? Yeah, Lizette, there you go. Of what? Her grandfather's passing. Ah, uh, well, I'm sorry about that. I don't really watch a lot of news. Asshole. It doesn't really sound like you mean it. I do mean it. Earnestly. Why wouldn't I? Typical Capini. Isn't her family involved with the Mafia or something? I wouldn't be surprised if she brought out the bat from behind her back right this moment. I nearly forgotten the crowd following Lizette, which was mostly comprised of people that no one wanted to see on typical school day. No one had the slightest idea of why exactly they, they followed Lizette around persistently, but they labeled themselves as social equals with her. That is out of line! Suzu comes from an honest family! Says the one whose family profits from political scandals. Hey. Yeah, your dad doesn't make anything unless he's in the court with dirty politicians. Ah! Hey, let's all calm down for a second, all right? I'm sure Anderson needs some time to recuperate. I mean, what just happened? We need to give her some respect. Once in a lifetime, I'll actually agree with you. Just stop. Stop acting like that already. Like you feel sorry for me. Hmm? What are you talking about? Ooh, they look astonished like that. I'm sure you're happy seeing me like this. You all you already have everything you wanted. And now seeing me like this, life couldn't get any better. Bitter bitterness seeped into me. The words started flying out of my mouth without filter. But honestly, I didn't care. I was so consumed by anger that I only, I only saw the set in front of me. What what exactly am I to you? Just another part of of your obstacle course? Is that what what I am? I'm sick of it, Lizette. I'm sick of I'm sick of all these charades. I'm sick of you. Gas arose from the crowd around her, and and I was brought back to the school hallway. Even my friends beside me looked in. Looked at me in surprise. Yeah, I could see that look at them. One girl looked like she she was going to speak up, but Lizette held her hand up to stop her. There was an, an emotion in her face that I couldn't quite that I couldn't quite make out, but I could see a form of pity in her eyes. No, don't you dare pity me. I looked a I looked away from her. I didn't want to see th that emotion in her eyes when she was talking to me. She she didn't even she she did she didn't have the right to look at me that way. I can't talk right now or read. I'm sorry. I know your grandfather passing away must have really taken a toll on your emotions. 
She stepped she stepped towards me and put and put a hand on my shoulder, giving me a tiny smile as for old as it's for old time's sake. But for some reason I didn't feel com comforted at all. Not that I was not that I was just angry at her, but the expression on her face where she leaned in close to me contorted in something complex. Something was different about her. I couldn't quite put my place my finger on it, but something about her was definitely had definitely changed. Well, I'll be going for now. Track meet responsibilities and all of that stuff. See you later. Something about Lizette made made me feel uncomfortable. I was just angry, but also uneasy. What what was it? I had not I had never seen her like that before. But I decided to pay no further attention to it. She continued running down the hallway with her gaggle of friends behind her. Excuse me, friends. I refocused my attention to Miss Phillips, who was walking down the hall towards me. Is everything all right, girls? Nothing we couldn't handle, Mrs. P. Just a bunch of snobs. Suzu, hush! It was nothing, Mrs. Phillips. I see. Well, Miss Anderson... Please accept my condolences for your loss. Thank you, Miss Phillips. Your grandfather was a good man. He really upheld the philanthropy of his company's policies, and the money that went towards charity, too. I know. He was amazing. I really look up to him, and I want to be as good as he was. Well, I know that you'll be as great as your grandfather. Hell yeah, she will! She'll be ten times better than her grandfather. Would I, would I really be better than my grandfather? Everyone seems to have high expectations for me. I want to do my best and make my family proud. But to be better than my grandfather? I wasn't sure about that. From outside the window, I saw a familiar blue car pull up to the curb. <laughs> Undoubtedly, it was my father in the driver's seat. Oh, my ride's here. Well, I guess I'll see you both tomorrow. Wait, was it just the end of the day, or I'm confused? Want us to come with you? Oh no, it's okay. <laughs> I'll be fine. See ya. Hey, Dad. Hey, honey. Alright. As I got into the car, I noticed my father looked troubled, clutching his, his steering wheel and st airing straight ahead. As if something was really bothering him. About what happened yesterday. I'm sorry for yelling at you. Does your cheek still hurt? No, it's nothing to worry about. I... Oh, sh What just happened? I... Yet, he couldn't bring himself to say what he could, could never say to me for such a long time. I wanted to hear the words to affirm how he really felt, but I guess even now he couldn't say it, say it to me. I turned my head away to look out the window. There was no point in waiting for something that was never going to come. Like that, he started to drive, and the conversation between us ended. So I had to focus my attention on the passing scenery. <sighs> We were taking the usual route to Grandfather's house. It was located within the vicinity of the school district, but it was still pretty far from the school front and from where our house was. He had always lived alone. He, he insisted on doing things by himself, even at his age living in such a large house. I wondered, did he, did he pass away with no one at his side as well? It sounded so lonely and sad. Wait, so grandma passed away before grandpa? Oh crap. Um, it was strange at, that that he decided on living alone, all alone in his large estate. If anything, he he could have lived with us. Or we could live with him. Either or. Sounds perfect. Though he was my f 
He and my father probably would have given each other the silent treatment the entire time. Maybe living alone was preferable to that. I had, I had, da, 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 da. I actually hadn't visit him for quite a while. Visits to his house were most frequent when I was a child, and I had, and I had grown up long since then. Last time I visited, though, I thought he looked just like, just as he usually was, happy and healthy. God dang. Okay. But the things that. But things changed. In the back of my mind, I, I knew that he he would have to leave one day. It wasn't like humans could live forever. So why was my heart still so heavy? Car ride was mostly spent in silence until he spoke up again. How was school? Maintaining your grades, I hope. Uh, yeah. I've been trying my best as far... As of so far. Trying? That's not really doing the best you can, is it? Okay, Mr. Tiger Parent. <laughs> with my with my father, only some words I said were felt were filtered through his ears. It was difficult to keep up with, with the, keep up a conversation without eventually talking about academics or my future. Even if it was something loosely based on it, he always found a way to interrogate when we when we talk. Interrogate it whenever we talk. Anyway, your belongings are in the trunk. There isn't a lot, so I'm sure you can manage bringing them inside the house. After all, you are on the road to being independent now. <coughs> I'm sorry. Yes, I can manage on my own. The usual silence resumed between us. It wasn't really sure I wasn't really sure what to say around him, especially when most of the time we didn't share the time the same opinions. One question did linger, linger in my mind though. If he was going to justify acting so nonchalant in grandfather's funeral, I had the right, right to at least know why. Try again, leave hmm. If I asked him again he might hit me. I leave him alone, he'll just, he'll just be relaxed and chill. I'm gonna leave it. I don't want to get hit again. <coughs> Ooh. There, there was no use talking to him about this. It, it would be like reopening a wound or a, reapplying a bruise. Exactly why I said leave it. I sighed as, as he. I sighed. He gave me a side glance out of curiosity, but he didn't pursue it further. Typical. I leaned against the car door and stared out the window. I really couldn't think, what would this place be like? I I had been to my grandfather's house before, but it it was one but it was one thing visiting, and it was another thing actually living there. How, <clears throat> how would I ma manage living on, on my own without any training to really care for the house? What the fuck? No one really likes you. Go. Go away, no one really likes you. Anyway, sorry about that. I, I am a terrible person. <clears throat> I knew that, that naturally the bills would would be paid by my parents, who inherited grandfather's stocks to the corporation. But I had I had never lived independent, independently before. Thinking about it made me fe feel like some kind of bird being pushed out of the nest. Though I, I was technically an adult, I felt unprepared and a bit daunted at the prospect of actually moving into a new place. Most, most people my age would be ecstatic moving out. After all, it would it would symbolize some kind of change in their lives, like being on the road to independence. But I felt like it was nothing of the sort. I really hope I, I wouldn't let my parents down. I wouldn't want to let my grandfather down. What, what would he be saying right now? Huh. Whew, excuse me. I gazed up at the passing clouds in, in the sky. If you're out there, grandfather. 
How would how would you be doing? Would there be anything you want to you you want to tell me at this moment? Of course, no answer. What was I doing? Searching for an answer in a heaven, in a heaven that that would or would not exist. I ducked my head to stare at at the blur of trees and cars from the car window. My head was definitely going into the clouds, there, cl into the clouds there at the moment. Either way, I found myself being dri driven off to my new home. Finally. Car rolled up to a, to a stop, and I drifted out of my thoughts. Here we are. Go on in. All right. Tell Ma I love her. All right. I love you, Dad. <sighs> Wanna say it? No. Make sure to come by and visit us often. No. I'm gonna miss you lots. Nothing other than a blank stare. I paused a bit before reaching. For the car handle, waiting for any form of goodbye, but he didn't speak again. I sighed and exited the car. Hear my father, hear my father, hear my dad, same thing. Pop up the trunk. I I saw the two large bag bags I packed last night, that were large enough to carry only things I needed. Took them out, placed the one bag on each shoulder, and, and closed the trunk. He then drove off, leaving me alone in front of the mansion. I watched my watched the blue car fade into the distance out of the road before turning to see my new home. There it is. It's huge. My grandfather gave me this. It's hard to believe. House is framed by a set of tall gates, and I hesitantly push them aside to make to take in the entire state. The house still looked looked like it it was when I last visited him. At a glance, it seemed kind of intimidating with its size. Though, if I came closer, it it was clear that there was there was more to it than that. The brick walls were framed by shrubbery and lovely flowers, giving it a homey and welcoming look. But in contrast, the tall doors into the house gave me a feeling of grand grandeur. I don't know French. <sighs> who who knew that what was waiting for me? But I would I wouldn't back down at at this moment. I took out the key to the front of the door and unlocked them. I think this is a good place to stop. It gives me suspense on what's going to happen inside the house. Then. We are in now. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'm sorry it's been a long time since I uploaded my, la last, my last video. But here I am. And this might be a very long video, but, you know, I'm back. There you go. Right, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like and comment. 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 Um, subscribe to the Neptune Army. Check out my Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff down in the description below. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!